We are the ashes, we are the fire, chapter 24. I fumble for my phone as it buzzes in the dark. I'm already awake. I'm awake because there's no sleeping when Marguerite is this close to the weapons she needs. But it's the dead and quiet time of night when the phones, when phones should not be ringing. And I cannot stop the immediate surge of heart into my throat. Oh God, um, there's a used condom right next to me. But it's Jess, not Nora. They're crying, but different from how Nora cried that night on that call. It's finally happened. Their dad is moving to San Francisco. Their mom is fleeing to Sapan for the rest of the summer while strangers pack up the art and antiques and sell the house. Jess has to go with one of them. Annoyance surges through me and I wrap my hand around the rondelle dagger that has taken up residence underneath my pillow. I breathe, poor baby, a luxury high rise in a city of diversity and culture or a tropical island paradise. Since I've met them, they've talked constantly about wishing their parents would get over, get it over with. Now it's happening. Dreams can come true. Can I come over? They say, but Marguerite has only just come face to face with Isabel. You're going to be fine. I say, I'll call you in the morning. Apology. You need to rest. Isabel turns the cloth on my forehead. The sky outside is pitchy black. Renee knew my father's ring, but Isabel didn't. A crest to know, to known I was the girl who'd stabbed at hay bales with fury, but no skill. Now I have both. My sister, Helen, is safe in my chambers with her lady's maid. Your maid awaits you in the adjoining room. I take all this in, struggle to form words to explain our presence, but there's no need. Sleep now. You've had a journey, and I suspect you've traveled more than miles. I do not wake again until the sun is high and Zahara brussels about me, about fresh and clean and newly uniformed, in any other morning, but it's not. Helen, she is found in the library. Did she sleep? Zahara pauses. I heard her scream, but when I checked, Amald's lullabies had done the trick. I sit up. Amaldi can soothe my sister in the night, but I will destroy the ones who made her scream. I do. I don the garments Zahara lays out, though they're far too fine. I will not be taken seriously, running through the halls and traveling rags. I do not, however, wash. I have more important things to consider than grind beneath their nails. Besides, the worst of it will never be washed away. The first servant does not understand my question, a simpleton, I think, or else they don't speak French. I do consider that perhaps my words are a jumble, like my mind, my heart. I interrupt the next hand on my hand and knees, scrubbing the stones of the great hall. She sighs, but has an answer I seek. The Duchess has gone out for her morning ride. The estate is grander than father's, but stables are stables. The familiar smell, the light creeping in through the cracks in the walls, the graceful beasts. I sink onto a pile of hay, let myself sit down, set down the unwieldy shield I've been carrying for days, and give myself a moment in which I do not fear for my sister's safety. Zahara's and Maldives are the other women. With only animals' eyes upon me, no expectations, pressing decisions, nothing but the crushing weight of living in this world I am, only Marguerite. But perhaps that is most terrifying of all. Which is worse, to imagine I could have done something and didn't, or to face the crushing truth I never had a chance. A stable boy's appearance reminds me that I'm never only Marguerite. Even in this refuge, there are men intruders. He is small, pimply, laughable to think he might be a threat. And yet, sometimes those are the ones most worthy of fear. Can I help you, mademoiselle, to stand, display my finery and obvious rank? Or maintain my position? Father's move of power to intimidate inferiors. Mademoiselle? I stumble to my feet, displaying not so much rank and finery as exhaustion and nerves. I am a guest of the Duchess. I await her return. Surely, mademoiselle, would be more comfortable. I am a guest of the Duchess, and I await her return. It's only sparks perfect French. This one speaks perfect French, and I am through with men who act though as though they cannot comprehend simpler words. Because they've fallen from the mouth of a woman. The stable boy gone, I stay on my feet, catch my balance. So I do not look the fool when Isabel returns. How can I expect to her help, her confidence, if I can barely take two steps without stumbling on bodies in my wake? It seems you are a personal friend of the Duchess after all. I whirl around at the sound of a voice, not the spindly stable boys, the guard from the night before. You clean up real nice. My heart thuds. I grasp for a sword I'll never hold again. I, my stumble backwards is my first mistake. I end up cornered. I owe you an apology. He steps towards me slow, like he's no threat, except we both know he's nothing but. 
if it weren't for your pretty little friend, Amaldi, I'd have turned you noble ladies out in the night. But ladies like you deserve to be kept warm and safe, secure behind walls. He's an arm's length away. I have, I could stab him if only. I glance wildly around. The tools on the wall are promising, but he's too close for pitchfork whip. What's wrong, Sherry? Nothing to fear. You're safe now. He reaches out a hand, trails a finger down the side of my face. I meet his gaze. Let him drink in the fear in my eyes, his intoxicant of choice. Distracting while my hands lash out, grabs the hoof pick from the wall, its short curved blade the perfect size. To thrust against his neck, force him against the stall, draw the bead of blood while he struggles, terror reversed. Hoof beats approach, but I do not move. I'll not give up this prey. Your form has improved, your grace, he cries out. The Duchess pleads with a woman to save. This mad woman, I think she's not mad, provoked perhaps. Isabella takes her time, removing the horse's saddle, leading him to his stall. I keep my gaze pinned on my prey, blade to his neck, enjoying his fear. How many throats pulsing alive do I need to feel on the tip of my blade before I'm safe? I falter. The moment I do, he spins away from my weapon and straight into the tip of another blade. Isabella holds her dagger casually. A lace fan, a parasol, a deadly weapon. His crime then? No crime. I'm not asking you. Her gaze fits from him to me. Then back to him. She won't falter. What is? But what was his crime? I know how he made me feel last night at the gate in the kitchen. And now, with his hand on my face. But a man will hardly find himself convicted of touching a maiden on the face. I only meant to serve her needs. With a flick of her wrist, the noble lady, Queen of Naples, Duchess of Lorraine, slices the fabric of his tunic. And also, judging by his howl, his flesh as well. Rope. She juts her chin towards the wall, where I found the hook. I grab a link of the rope. You do the honors.